Hey everybody, welcome back to Trek Yards. I'm Captain Foley. I am Commander Goggins. That's right, and today we're going to continue our look at concepts. Uh, some really cool concepts out there that were never used, but nice concept art that was created as a what if, maybe this should be the thing, we'll see. So what are we looking at today, Samuel? So as you know, uh, we've looked at most of the big ships over the last couple of years in terms of just like full episodes, and I find the concepts really, really interesting. Most of the concepts are out there somewhere. It doesn't mean you've ever seen them. They could be hidden somewhere, they could be on a hard drive somewhere, and occasionally I drop. A, uh, I find things like, oh, this is one of those such things, so click onto the picture, Stuart. This is the first concept of the NX-01 era space station slash dry dock. It then became the classic dry dock we see in the show. This got to, uh, and I read it's on John Eves' eavesdropping, you can find it on his, his website. It got through four passes, they thought this was going to be it, and then the decision was made to make it the dry dock like the dry dock. And you can see how it's very early in the process, because if you zoom in, you can see his version of what the NX was going to be, which I'm sure we can talk about in a minute as well. Uh, but yes, this was the very first pitch pass for the, uh, the star base of the NX era. Obviously it never went anywhere, but hell interesting. Yeah, it is very interesting and definitely outside the Federation aesthetic, kind of. I mean, it ties in a little bit with the Franz Joseph starbase we see in the technical manual with the ball sections, but, you know, it seems more like real world uh, space station kind of. And yeah, the first thing I noticed was the, the Enterprise, which looks very much like what we finally see in Discovery, which is kind of the way John Hughes went with the uh, the the concept for that, even though it had straight struts and then they changed it to what we see here. So yeah, this would have been cool to have an enterprise like that. But the the the, new, the, the article on, on his page said this is very much obviously the enterprise is closer to us, so we'll real world it. Um, and I'm assuming it's older, so this is kind of like it's presumably a decade, two decades old, and therefore you know it makes sense on that plane. The NX being this new thing to come out. Obviously, the the dry dock we did get just looks like a precursor to. I say just. I mean it's great. It's just like a precursor to the the TMP dry dock, and it kind of fits into the NX vibe, but it definitely couldn't be built now. This kind of looks like it could be, but I, I agree with you. It, it doesn't really have any Star Trek goodness to it, but obviously it's if you're trying to make this look like a retro show, that could have been a really cool idea, giving us a, you know, a larger, more self-sustainable uh, space station thing in orbit, and then you know, cut to a dry dock, it's like, oh cool, and then you cut to the NX, it's like, oh wow, this is the the first thing that looks like a Starfleet ship, whereas this is just Earth tech, you know. I would think that would have been too, not generic, but too real-worldy for, for for Star Trek Enterprise. Actually, I wouldn't have minded that too much. This this looks like a continuation of the ISS. Uh, you got that real-world module on the bottom, which is very reminiscent of what we saw in the 60s for the space program, and then they kind of built onto it by the looks of it, which I think is fantastic. Um, so I would have been had no issues with this. That being said, I do like the dry dock they use just because it's easy for people to tie in with. And to be fair, I think the dry dock that they use would probably be a lot easier to construct than this. Um, this is more of a space station and not just a, a facility for building a ship. And this this would be a precursor to what we, for a uh, Earth space dock that we eventually see in Star Trek Three. So mm, I mean, that's interesting. Yeah, that, that's I mean, true. Yeah, it, it, it's, building onto it or whatever, and yeah, it's forward thinking in a sense. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, I, I kind of like the real world aspect of it, even though I'm not a huge real space kind of fan. Um, but yeah, it doesn't doesn't feel Star Trek enough. I'm surprised it got through so many passes, to be honest, with the producers. What do you think you know? could have made it more Star Trekky then? Well, adding some actual facilities off of it that like look like the regular dry dock that eventually you know would evolve to become just the just the dry dock that we finally saw, but to have one or two like off of it with a ship in it or whatever being constructed or repaired, or even something more similar to Earth space dock with like a uh, a door that you could go in and out, but obviously a lot smaller scale. Any design process, it's weird because if you look at designs now. There's a reason things stay the way they stay the way they look. Like planes, visibly certain from medium distance, from very early fighter plane to modern plane, there's a lot of similarities because that's just good aerodynamics. Same with cars; it's like they keep relatively similar. All the subtleties can change and all the internals can change, but a body, you know, a bus from 
the sixties of bus from two thousand twelve, fifteen, eighteen, whatever, they're gonna look very, very similar. But can you really use the same logic for seventeen, ninety, eighty, a hundred years when also space is involved? Where the the, re the the requirements, the needs, you know, when you have to have thick hull armor versus thin hull armor versus power versus rotation for gravity. I mean, these things sh should change the paradigm, but at the same token, having that visual continuity, you know, a dry dock design is so simple, and Andy did it, and then everyone based off it. But I'm, I'm visualizing with this design, if if all they'd done was that middle ring, the big balls, right? I'm not sure what they're trying to be exactly. I'm, I big sort of got windows on, but it looks more like fuel. Yeah, I thought either fuel storage or like oxygen. <laughs> Yeah, it, if you made that habitable, habitable space instead, maybe with like the top being an arboretum and the bottom being something else, like function. If you move that to the top, right to the top, so now you've got the stepped look like space dock, and then you put um, because I love the solar panels, make the entire top top of the ring solar panels, so it's just like constant power, like it always faces the sun. That's one thing it does, you know, and then at least it have this functional sense, and you get. This, stepped look and yeah maybe some docking but it'd be simpler docking just like more like space station just like docks right onto the side but you still got a visible shape that feels familiar and a function that feels familiar but it's clearly way before but would that be too much like well why would you change why would you not change design in 180 years that's such a long time do they never think to reinvent the wheel you know i don't know if it's too eight brain of me just to say it should look the same or too you know similar what do you think? I don't think it's too eight brain. I mean, if you look at the actual real space stuff, uh, even the, the ISS satellites, whatever, they very much f five, six decades later still look very similar to the 60s because, as you said, with the airplanes, it's tech that works and is proven. So minor enhancements, minor upgrades, you know, which aren't really noticeable at first glance. But yeah, I, I like your idea of actually moving things around and actually having it more space dock esque. Uh, and why don't I just read John's actual comment on this, just to give the John Eves effect. Uh, so, in the early days of Star Trek Enterprise, we were designing a new segment in time to a few decades prior to the original series. The idea was to retro back everything from the 60s iconic series to a more NASA and nuts and bolts kind of look. With that in mind, my uh, with that in mind, we ventured into a new yet older style of space dock dry dock design with the Skylab feel to the aesthetics. The result of this path is what you see before. Uh, is what you see before you now. A large circular space station with massive solar arrays that domed and dome details to bring us all back to, into the more present day time of space. Architecture with a slightly futuristic feel. This was one of about four passes before settling on a more chunky version of the traditional dry dock as established in the motion picture. Uh, yeah. We'd love to have seen the four passes though, because I wonder if it got more retro as time went on or less retro, because it does again feel it, it's so non spacey. Like, it's so not... I don't really see much futuristic to it at all. He did make the statement there of tying it in with uh, more of... It's the bridge between what we have now and the the future of Star Trek, because this was like that prequel stage, right? Um, so I can see John with his love of real-world, you know, concepts and te uh, space tech to actually start more retro, maybe. Um, so I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I would love to see the four passes to see the progression, but there is a little bit of tie-in, I, I think, with the Franz Joseph uh, Starbase that we see in the technical manual, um, which you know might not be evident at first glance for a lot of people, but um, you know that was TOS tech that never really was seen on screen if it, if it did exist, uh, but it's still got that. It's kind of locked in a lot of people's brains because that was. A, 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 a reference that they use quite evident uh, quite quite a lot so i think there might have been some influence there as well so yeah yeah but yeah. as we close out let's also zoom in because this is luckily a high-res file and look at that early concept for the nxo one at least a potential and it's amazing how it, it's got the flat front neck like the uh sean hargraves design enterprise for the jj films and it's got the two fins at the back like his excelsior and and later the the JJ Prize and, and Shinjo and such, or the uh, Discovery Prize. Like, what do you think of this one? As I said, man, it looks a lot like the Discovery Prize. <laughs> um, e yeah, I mean, if I didn't know better, I, w I thought this would be a concept that they were going to be using in Discovery, and this was like the Disco Prize put in there to show scale. Um, but yeah, we almost had, well, 
I don't know if we almost had, but John did design a, a very enterprise like enterprise for enter, for uh, that series. So, <clears throat> and that and one worked is, pretty damn well. That could have worked yeah. pre pre TOS. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and a lot of those ideas he did carry over to the the Discovery Prize, which is quite evident here. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it would have been great, but it's a what if. I'm sure in some universe somewhere that's a thing. Uh, I, oh, I think that the back taper is awful with the secondary oh, yeah. hull. I just I don't understand that at all. And it definitely doesn't fit with this aesthetic either, the space station. Like the NX-01 fits way better with this, um, but obviously we they weren't there yet. Uh, as it is just a concept or a thing. But what a beautiful concept and what a beautiful shading and the planet and, and John does good work even if it's just concept. So guys, <clears throat> let us know what you guys think of this concept space station dry dock facility. Is this something you would have liked to have seen? And have you seen it before? Because I hadn't until this very day. So thank you, Samuel, for finding this. Um, and uh, yeah, by all means, guys, put your comments down below. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification icon, do all that cool stuff, and follow us for more great content as we keep pumping that stuff out. Yeah, and of course, support us on Patreon if you'd like to on a monthly basis or join our Super Chat lives every single week. Look at numerous topics and episode reviews. And when the new shows come out, we'll be really doing a massively deep dive. Probably the biggest, deepest dive anywhere on YouTube will be here on Trek, guys. We're excited for that. And of course, the merch down below. Click the link. And of course, you can buy Eagle Moss ships um, by using the code Trek card to get money off. So everyone's a winner in that situation. And uh, yeah, there you go. That's right. So until next time, guys, and another great concept or actual ship or just discussion or any of the other cool stuff we do, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Commander Kongs. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>